How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and as you probably know, Google Chrome is one of the most popular web browsers out there. Many of you are probably using it right now, and there's also plenty of extensions for it that can add lots of functionality. So today we're gonna go over 10 really cool Chrome extensions that you might not have known about before and are worth checking out. And even if you're using some other web browser like Firefox, a lot of these may possibly be available on those as extensions as well. Before we jump in though, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for easily building a professional style website for anything from an online store to a photography portfolio with plenty of tools for marketing, analytics, and more. You can learn more by going to the link in the description. So now let's get started. All right, so number one, we have the Great Suspender. This is gonna be good for those of you out there, you know who you are, who just have tons of tabs open at one given time, and we already know that Google Chrome is a bit of a memory hog. It'll just eat up as much memory as it can, and having a ton of tabs open can really slow down your computer potentially. And what this extension does, it's very simple, is it takes any tabs that you haven't been using for a certain amount of time that you set, and then it will remove it from the memory, it'll suspend it. And in the settings for this extension, there's plenty of options for things like whitelisting domains, so it'll never suspend tabs there, or tabs playing audio will not be suspended, so if you like to listen to music in the background, for example, and also it'll prevent tabs from being suspended if there's unsaved inputs or forms. So maybe you're filling out, I don't know, job application or something, and you're researching on some other tab, you obviously don't want that to close out and then lose the data. And then there's plenty of other options in there that I'm not gonna get into, they're a bit smaller, but you can see for yourself. So this is definitely a pretty cool one. All right, up next, this one comes in real handy a lot for me, and it is called Push Bullet. And it basically makes it easier to move things from your browser or one device to another device. So what I mean by that, for example, is say you have a picture on a website that you think is hilarious, you want to send it to your friends, normally what you would have to do is you'd have to go on your phone, navigate to the website, the same web page, however you got to it, you'd have to like, if you found it on Reddit, you'd have to go on Reddit, find the post again. Whereas with Push Bullet, with this extension, you can simply right click on the image, go to the Push Bullet context menu, and pick which device you want to send it to. Now you will have to have one of the Push Bullet apps on the device you're sending it to, or if it's another computer, the extension, but when you do send it from one to the other, it'll just appear in that Push Bullet app. And this doesn't have to be just for images. You can do this for web URLs, so you can just right click anywhere on the page and then select the device and then the URL link will be sent to the other device, or you can even do it for just text, so you can highlight like a paragraph of something, right click that after it's selected and send it, and then it'll, you can just copy and paste it off the other phone. So I think it should be pretty obvious why this would come in handy. I probably don't have to spell it out for you. I just know that it's something I use personally all the time. All right, moving on. I think this one is gonna save you guys a lot of headache and it's called Tipio Form Recovery. Now, I think we've all had that terrible experience where we're typing in some text fields on some website, you type all this stuff out, and then you go to hit submit or whatever, and then you get some sort of error, or the page doesn't load, and then you try to go back, and everything you typed in is gone, and you have to type it all in again. And this can be really disastrous if it's like a really long paragraph you typed out. This extension can prevent all that by auto-saving any text you type into text boxes on websites. So for example, after typing something into a text box, you'll be able to see on the right-hand side, there will be a little clock icon, which will allow you to see previous entries into that box. Alternatively, you can just right click in the same text box instead of clicking a little icon, and that'll allow you to browse through all the previous entries. And there's plenty of extension settings too, which you can customize however you want. For example, how long you want to save it. So if you're a little bit more privacy conscious and you're only worried about cases where, you know, you hit the back button and it disappears, maybe you only want to keep the data for like one day. And another thing you might have been wondering about is by default, it will not save entries into password entry boxes or credit card boxes. So you don't have to worry about it saving your password insecurely and then some hacker gets it or something like that. And the whole extension is even open source, so you don't have to worry about it being malicious. Someone else probably would have called it out by then or if you wanna be paranoid and look at it yourself, that's always an option. So really cool extension. All right, now the next extension is called NewsGuard. So with so much fake news out there, it's hard to tell what sources are reliable, what's not. You come across some website, you know, is this some random blog someone made up or what? You don't know. What this extension does, or at least tries to do, is rate news websites based on factors of credibility and transparency so you can better judge 
what a news website is. So this includes things like does not repeatedly publish false content or clearly labels advertising, that sort of thing. So if you come across a so-called news website that you've never heard of before and you're like, is this even real? You can get a little bit better context if it's rated by NewsGuard. Now look, it's definitely not perfect, especially when it comes to mainstream news outlets, which I think can often be very biased and very deceptive in their own ways. And this NewsGuard extension tends to give them a free pass, usually giving them green check marks pretty much across the board, even though I think these news outlets are a little bit more deceptive than that suggests. So yes, even this extension does tend to be a little bit biased, but I think it's more useful, again, in situations where you've never heard of this website before, you don't know anything about it, you can at least get maybe a general sense of how reliable it is, or at least some context and know whether you should look into it a little bit more, maybe look at another source to see if it agrees. Moving on though, the next extension is called Fireshot, which is yet another tool for taking screenshots of websites. Now, I know there are several of these tools out there for taking screenshots of websites, but in my experience, some of these tend to work on some websites, other ones don't, particularly when you're trying to capture the entire page and it has to scroll. Sometimes certain ones can look weird. So this is just another option if the other one you're using might not work. And how it works is really simple. You just click the icon and then you can choose whether you wanna capture the visible part of the page, the entire page, which is probably the most useful one, or just a certain selection. And then when you do that, it'll give you the option to save as an image or a PDF. You can also print, or if you just wanna copy to the clipboard, you can just right click on the image and do that. Then there's also some basic options. So for example, you can choose whether you wanna save it as a PNG or a JPEG. I would always do as a PNG because it's lossless. You're not gonna have any compression. And again, probably the most useful function here would be capture the entire page because that's where it auto scrolls through and then combines all these screenshots into one and it's a seamless image of the whole big web page. So this is definitely a useful one and I use it a lot of times in videos when I'm trying to show certain websites that might not be able to be captured in just one picture. All right, before we continue though, gotta pay the bills. So let me tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Like I mentioned before, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it extremely easy to set up a domain and website even if you have no prior experience with that sort of thing. You can just pick from any of the template designs to start with, and there are plenty of categories for whatever type of website you wanna create, from an e-commerce site to a blog, a local business, a personal portfolio, just to name a few. And there are lots of powerful backend tools as well for things like appointment scheduling right through your website, customizable email campaigns, and of course, analytics to see things like traffic sources, page views, and time on site. So if you're interested, you can check out squarespace.com slash theojo for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And of course, that link will also be in the description. So now let's continue. The next extension we could talk about is called Web of Trust, and it's meant to warn you when you come across a website that is dangerous security-wise. So for example, it's really useful in Google search results. So if you do a Google search, next to each URL, you will see a little donut shape icon, and it'll be a different color, either green, yellow, or red, meaning it's safe, you should have caution, or it's a dangerous website. And if it's red, it might be, for example, blatantly malicious website, like phishing sites, or scams probably. If you happen to go to a red website anyway, maybe it wasn't a page that had the little donut showing, when you go on it, it'll pop up a little warning to tell you that this is a potentially dangerous site and why, and then you can even go and click the little scorecard it's called to see why it got the rating, and you can see reviews by people who are saying, oh, this is a scam, whatever. And I believe this extension is totally crowdsourced, meaning it relies completely on ratings by users, so obviously more popular websites are gonna have more ratings and are gonna be more reliable in ratings. Ratings, whereas if a website doesn't have a lot of viewers that don't use this extension, it might not be rated at all. And it seems like there's two separate factors, rating and reputation. And I believe the rating is just derived from the reputation after there's enough reviews. So not every website will have a rating and reputation. Some might not have a rating, but they have a bad reputation if too few people have reviewed it so far. But you can just check yourself and it's still good to maybe get an idea or if there's something that's blatantly bad about a website, at least you can know then. 
All right, up next we have Dark Reader. Now this basically is an extension that allows you to enable dark mode on every website, even those that don't have a native dark mode. So you can control this extension with simple toggle on or off, and there's lots of different additional options. So when you toggle it on, you can do either dark or light mode, and the so-called light mode is a little different from being off completely, where you can still change some of the settings below. So there's things like brightness, contrast, sepia or grayscale. And then you can also create a list of websites and change how you want to behave on those sites. So for example, you can only invert the ones that are on the list or don't invert the ones that are on the list. So if you're a big fan of dark mode or maybe you just find it easier to read on certain websites like that, this could come in handy. All right, we got a few more extensions and the next one is called Rain Alarm. And this is meant to warn you when it's about to rain in your area. And it doesn't just use a basic forecast. What fun would that be? You can go on any app and see, oh, whatever chance of raining at this time. This extension uses real-time data like radar. So it will actually be able to tell when it's really approaching. Basically in the settings, you just set the location you wanna use it on. You can set how often you want it to check for rain in that area and then a search radius. And then you can also choose the sensitivity of the alert if you need to. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Maybe if you get some false positives, you can change that. And then I guess how it works is once it detects radar for showing rain within that radius, then chances are it's gonna rain in your area pretty soon. And then it'll let you know with a little icon in the Chrome extension, or it'll also pop up as a Windows notification in your notification bars. Also, if you click on the extension icon, it'll take you to the extension page where it'll show you the actual radar for your area and the radius, so you can see where it's getting the data from and get an idea more exactly of where the rain is. So this one might come in handy if you're in a really rainy area. All right, up next, this one is called FlowCrypt. Now this is gonna be for much more advanced users, but basically it allows you to use PGP encryption right within Gmail. So PGP stands for pretty good privacy, and it basically is a method for encrypting text or emails or whatever using a private key pair that you generate. Now, if this sounds way too advanced, you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, you can just ignore this one. But if you do know what I'm talking about, this might excite you. So basically when you enable this extension, it'll ask you to have access to your Gmail account, and then that will allow you to actually you know, send emails and stuff, and it'll create a new button in Gmail that will allow you to secure compose an encrypted email instead of just composing an email. And then it pretty much just handles all the encryption stuff you need to without having to do it yourself with whatever else other program. Now remember, this is only gonna work between two different people who are using PGP as encryption. So if you're sending someone an email, you have to know their public key. And if they're sending it to you, they have to know yours. So this is not just gonna work. You send someone an encrypted email, they're not gonna know what the heck to do with it. So like I mentioned, for those of you who know what this is, you might find it useful. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just don't worry about it. For the final extension though, we have HTTPS Everywhere. This is also an encryption related extension but this is one that I think everybody should use, even people who have no idea what it does. Let me explain it. So as you probably know, when you go to a website in the URL bar, it'll either say HTTP, which means it's not a secure website, or HTTPS, which means it is secure as encrypted. And if you go to a web page like a login page or like a bank website or something, you should always hope it's HTTPS. That's usually where you see that little lock or if it's an insecure website, some browsers may show a little red unlock symbol, it depends. In any case though, what this extension does is ensures that any website you go to, if it has HTTPS available, it will make sure the browser always uses the secure version of the site even if the website usually defaults to the non-secure version. Because in general, if a website does have the ability to encrypt it when you're using it, that's always the one you're gonna wanna be using. And it really is simply set it and forget it. You don't really have to change any settings or anything. So it's good for people who don't really know much about computers, but you wanna be more secure. There is also an option in there called encrypt all sites eligible. And that apparently tries to force all websites to use a secure version, even if it doesn't know if it supports HTTPS. But if it can't, it will pop up like a big warning page. So that's probably just gonna be annoying. I don't think I would enable that setting. So this is an extension I have talked about in the past, but I think it's so essential that really everyone should have it. And it's definitely worth using if you haven't heard of it before. So those are 10 really cool Chrome extensions that you might not have heard of before. Let me know in the comments if there's any really awesome ones that I've not mentioned in any previous videos or anything that you think are worth talking about. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go to squarespace.com slash theojo to learn 
learn more and that link will also be in the description. Now, if you liked these Chrome extensions and you're still not satisfied, you wanna know even more, I did make another video in the past with 13 Chrome extensions that are totally different from the ones I mentioned here. And you can just click on that video if you wanna check those out. Should be worth seeing those. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.